This mosque inspires me with many lessons and a lot of wisdom. Like a teacher who gives his students unforgettable lessons. Lessons on a trust lost between two friends due to a betrayal followed by a strange and skillful punishment leading to a long regret that accompanied his friend to his death. This friend is buried in this mosque, which is his, because the betrayal of this friendship has had serious and disastrous consequences. As a result, Murjan spent the rest of his life living in a long and deep state of regret. Since this incident, Murjan began to do good deeds and benevolence to approach God and obtain his forgiveness. Murjan, one of Sultan's Oasis servants, was a mercenary soldier captured in one of the wars and was sold as a slave in Baghdad for the palace of Sultan Oasis. Murjan rose through the ranks until he held the highest position, that of vizier. He became an intellectual and a philosopher speaking several languages. The mosque that Murjan had built has an exceptional location. It overlooks Rashid Street, the oldest street in Baghdad. It is in a short district. Its design is so beautiful that is, its facade is in the Iraqi National Museum. As for the mosque, the destroyed part was rebuilt in one of the wings of the Iraqi Museum. Because in 1946, Rashid Street cut the mosque in half amid popular protests and took it separated from its school, its caravan, Sirai, Khan Marjan and the Marjan Hospital but it remained adjacent to a Georgia market which is also affiliated with the mosque as a waqf to financially support the mosque, school, hospital and other attachments such as housing for teachers and students. The sin and betrayal of Marjan which he attempted to atone for by this mosque and its dependencies is that when Sultan Oweis left Baghdad at the heat of a military campaign, he appointed his wazir and faithful friend Murjan to lead the country in his place and reign in his name until his return. Based on this, Sultan Oweis left Baghdad with his army and headed north to launch a military campaign that would last several months. But Murjan took advantage of his master's departure from Baghdad and declared his independence. The end of Ali Khanid state and the beginning of the rule of his Burjanian state in Baghdad. This always get back quickly to Baghdad and intense battle broke out and it was always who won the fight. Murjan's plan to defend Baghdad and flood the city's surroundings failed. The author al Hassani says, after suppressing the rebellion, Oweis imprisoned Mirjan, and instead of executing him or killing him, he liberated him so that he sees for himself the extent of the destruction and slaughter that he caused. He drew his sword, and instead of killing him, he said to him, I'm not going to kill you. Go, see the people who died because of you. Go see the destruction that has taken place in the city because of you. So Murjan came out wandering and stumbling among the corpses, lamenting and blaming himself. And from that day on, he had only one goal, which is to devote himself completely to do good to people in the hope of obtaining God's forgiveness and obtaining clemency for this great sin that he had committed. So Murjan had the Murjan's mosque built along with the Murjan school and the teacher's housing wing. He also built 100 store, a Georgia souk today, the largest souk in Iraq, Murjan school, the hospital. He also had Khan Murjan built as well as a hospital overlooking the Tigris for students. 
A Georgia today represents the pillar of economic life. Antran Morjan, the caravanserai, became an economic center and a place of reception of conveys. And over time, it turned into a financial center. Then it became the financial district, banking and monetary center. And in its proximity today is the central bank of Iraq and the most important group of banks in the country. From the Jalairi era to the Ottoman era and beyond, and to this day, the place is teeming with people and merchants. And Murjan spent the rest of his life in this mosque, dedicating his life to serving the poor, praying and asking for forgiveness for his deed. And when his death approached, he did dig his grave in this mosque to be buried there. Writer Al Janabi says he placed his grave near the door of the mosque under the dome in the hope that a pious person would step on him and pray for him for good so that God would forgive his sins. And today the mosque has been neglected and it has become, as you see today, a swamp of subterranean water and humidity after several centuries of receiving worshippers who walked on his grave. Many people remember how people, worshippers, were gathering there and entering the mosque, where the tomb of Forjan flat on the ground in the shape of a large alabaster. Many jurists and lawyers graduated from this school, such as the historian Abbas al-Azawi. We hope that one day the doors of the mosque will be reopened and that a restoration will be done on this important building and that we will return there to pray and fulfill his wishes to walk on him so that he obtains God forgiveness. And like many beautiful human relationships, whether love, friendship, gratitude, it ends. Putting the people concerned at a crossroads it happens that friends separate, but sometimes their beautiful memories remain. Also respect and appreciation, but an attitude, a position that is sometimes unforgettable, which turns into a barrier that cannot be crossed. Since that day, the two friends have moved away and are not like before. Separation is the antithesis of the meeting, but it can also be the result of its natural extension, like the relationship of Marjan and his friend. As for Mujan, his regret is not just because he lost that friendship, but for the people who were killed and the destruction that ravaged the city. As for his best friend, maybe he couldn't come near him. It seems to me that they spend the rest of their life like this. His friend knows him well and knows that he suffers every day and that it is his only way to expiate his mistake. But with that, they formed a beautiful frame of separation and I don't know if they had exchanged greetings somewhere or in such and such situation. Murjan, was he a good man? I mean that despite all the incidents, that destroy the friendship. Sometimes there remains a good memory of a beautiful past situation, of a good time they had spent together. We can discern that although he betrayed his friend, he was a good person. Because if he was bad, he wouldn't have done all these things. Perhaps one could say, that in every human being there is good and bad and there is the positive side and the negative side. God bless you Murjan.